Welcome to Global Financial Engineering. I am Dr. Glenn Brown. In this, another episode of the Global Weekly Commentary, I want to look at the version of the Global Complete Moving Average Trading System and to answer a few questions regarding the option whether we should use the 821 cross or the 825 cross. Another objective of the session is to answer the question which other platform can be used to configure the global complete moving average trading system. And finally, how to use the system to analyze financial assets, which includes stocks, commodities, futures. One of the guiding light here at Global is that we should have a uniform system. Irrespective of the time frame that we are trading on, we believe that our strategy should be consistent. It should have a name. It should have its own risk management based on the laws of multiple time frame and then when we engineer a system we take into account different features of the system while we discuss the global complete moving average system note that there is no guarantee and this video is for educational purposes only also let us go through the general risk warning as it is critical for you to be aware of the risk. As usual, as we had indicated to you before, if the print in the risk warning in the various versions of these videos are fine, then we recommend for you to go to our website, type in risk warning or risk in the search box, and you will see the risk in the browser, which you are able to enlarge. So let's go over to our risk warning and what I'm going to do as usual is to put up the risk warning, page one of it, give you a time to go through it. Then I put up page two while we wait to start the technical aspect of the session and you read through it. We recommend for you to pause it, read through it, those of you who are not able to enlarge the video, then you can go over to our website to read the risk warning. Again, we will be using various instruments and you might possibly get excited when you see results. Remember here, past results are not necessarily indicative of future results. You must do your own testing you must also test whatever such you want to use via stimulated account. And at the end of this, you'll also see the CFTC 4.41 disclaimer as well. So let me allow you to go through this and then we'll move over to the most important part of the session. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you reach down to the end here. I want to scroll down to the final section and give you the opportunity to read through it. Continuation of the risk disclaimer. Then you'll also see the CFTC 4.41 rule in terms of hypothetical and simulated performance result, which I think is relevant to this session. I want to read through them and then we head over to our strategy. Yes, it might seem to be boring to be going through these risk warnings. It's a requirement. And if you don't have the patience, you will not want to make it in this business. Okay, so now that we get rid of the major aspect of this, I want to uh, I want to go back over to my MetaTrader 4 platform. And as indicated, we're going to use uh, this session to talk to you. So it's going to be a mixed session. We're going to look at a few of the um, the 
stocks that have been pretty much popular in the financial market commentaries today on Bloomberg and CNBC, Yahoo Finance. But we're not going to join the talking heads. We're not going to join them. We want to present you with the opportunity to be able to listen to them, then go to your system to see if what they are saying match up with your system. In, in 2022, I started to, I started a new mandate with Ty to tell the people the truth. And the truth is that most of these persons that you see on these financial channels, they have never yet executed a trade on their own. They are they're what they call financial journalists. And hence, in court, we call them talking heads. We listen to them just to get the sentiments of the market because the truth is that most market participants are totally ignorant to what they are doing. That's why uh, most of the time we say 90% of them lose money. Because they they go by God's feeling, okay? Or they go by, you know, noise or listen what people are talking about and just run and buy a stock or run and go buy a contract. Um you don't need to do that. So we wanna we, we, we have engineered a system that can withstand this the test of time. And while it is free, it doesn't mean that it is worthless. Okay, so let's head over to Meta Trader. And I'm going to also, uh, and this is our, um, I'm going to look at Boeing. It's a very interested price action today on Boeing. Um, I'm not going to repeat what was the market sentiment in terms of um, commentary based on fundamental analysis. Because the truth is that while we read about fundamentals in terms of the various financial matrix that we use, you know, uh, earnings per share, earnings and those things, um, from my experience, those information are useless when you get them. It is my opinion, and then that's how we design trading system so that we can put it to the test. So we take opinion, or what I call hypothesis. It's a guess. Nothing that we do or think about, we consider it to be absolute. There's no guarantee, okay? It is an hypothesis. And then we put the hypothesis to test. Until there's something that can come and invalidate it, then we can accept it and put money on it and accept the risk for that. So in my previous session, we have introduced to you what we call the global uh, complete moving average trading system because the majority of the system is built on moving average. And we have uh, indicated to you the different moving average, the 8, 21, uh, uh, 50, 100, 200. But yes, person would have seen in some of my commentaries that I speak about the 825 trading strategy. And in truth and fairness, the 825 is not much different from the 821. So we are talking about a basic crossover trading system when the 8 EMA cross above the 21 EMA. But I prefer the 25 EMA. I believe it gives me a better position based on other factors or features that I use on, the, on our main trading software, which is the global algorithmic trading system. And yes, the global algorithmic trading system is much more complicated than this. Okay, so... I don't want you to get to um, caught up to believe that this is what the global algorithmic trading system consists of. Um, it's long way more advanced, have a lot more features. 
it's automated which means that it calculate the stop loss the profit target the position size it moves it automatically by itself so we really don't have to do anything so there's a lot of coding in that but some of you will not be able to reach there and we're not able to even afford um, coders to quote the system but it doesn't mean that you can't make it okay um, and that system have been uh, in the development phase for over uh, 23 years okay um, but this what I present here it's a complete system it's a system that tell you when how much where to exit okay so I want to clarify in terms of the 8 21 50 100 200 in truth and in fact I prefer to use 8 25 50 89 140 and 200 as I said before though there is not much difference between them for example here is the 25 EMA I can put the 21 beside it so you could see exactly what I'm talking about okay so I want to put uh, I want to put the 21 but maybe I want to use, yeah, I want to use a, da a dash line so you could see the difference between the 21 and 25. It's not much different. Sometimes I could keep both on the chart to identify what I call the KISS status. The KISS status is when both 21 and 25 merge, they KISS together. And that's what I call a decision point. Now, if you look, here is the 21 it rise above the 25 see there above the 25 above the 25 above the 25 see that there so what I sometimes do is to I want to see what majority of the traders are doing and the truth is that majority of the traders will be using 821 so I use the 25 to get a little edge because most of the time it comes down to the 21 and bounce and if it comes down to 21 and bound, then maybe I could put in, if I want, a very tight stop by putting it 180 below the 25 line. And that depends on my risk appetite. Sometimes I can get very crazy um, in taking risk, but I want to have some control. So what you normally find at times, price will come and pierce both 21 and 25. It doesn't mean that it reverse the trend we call that corrective wave correction now I want to do a little thing here I want to, I want to do a little thing here. I want to do a little improvement on the uh, the eight um, the first version and therefore I want to call this version v1.02 I want you to stay with me I want you to stay with me I am going to use the 25 as the base instead of the 21. Okay, so 8. So you see the 8 EMA. Okay. I'm going to take the 21 out. You would have seen that technically the same as the 25, but I want to use the 25. I will show you why I'm going to use the 25 because I use the 25 in what I call market cycle analysis. And in this, I create what I call a forward line. And this line is a very powerful line that I use on the weekly chart to make a decision, especially in equity, in stock, whether or not I want to be a bull or a bear. I want to get in some interesting stuff in this lecture here. And please understand that my lectures are not short lectures. I, 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 I'm... I normally lecture for three hours straight, straight from my head. Also, remember here, I'm not lecturing from script. I'm lecturing from my head, okay? So don't expect that I'm going to just give you a little five-minute video and that's it. I'm not interested in that foolishness. I, I, I want to put something that is meaningful, 
So let's get a cup of coffee and let's reason together. Okay, so let's reason now. So I just want to reinforce a, two th a few things here. So what I'm going to do, let me take back this out, is now I'm going to use 8, 25, 50, okay? Instead of using 100, I want to use 89. I want to use 140. I want to use 200. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. These are the six boundary lines that I normally use on every single trading system that I design. So I'm going to let you into some secret here. These are the six boundary lines that I normally use on every single trading system that I design. When I speak of boundary lines, I mean that within the boundary of 8 and 25, you will find other moving averages. Why do you not see it here? One of the difference between this and the global alpha trading system is that within each of these, I capture all the various moving average to create what I call color bands. So at the edge, you will find all these filter through with different bands, and then that form what I call a market pattern, a structure, a market structure. And as I look at the color, I know whether or not I'm in a bullish or a bearish market structure. And if I'm in a bullish or a bearish market structure, I would use that to determine whether I'm going to buy or short a financial asset. But in the most advanced system, when I design them, I also incorporate multiple time frame analysis. So I need three additional time frame confirmation. I'm not going to get into that now because we don't need it in this system. But because I do some changes, I'm going to do some changes here. I want to call this version two. So I'm going to show you how we, how we change that. So what I'm going to do here first, since I've changed to 8, 25, 50, 89, 140, 200. I'm going to save this and I'll show you how we do that. We go template, go save. I'm going to just go and pick up my original name that I had designed for this, which was the complete global complete moving average. But if look, I have V1.01. I want to call this V1.02. Okay. So you don't want to uh, erase the version of the work that you have done before. So when you're designing system, it's best to give them a name. So later on, you might want to go back to see what exactly and why did you change. But because in this um, system, um, as we start from lecture one and we build onto the system as we go along, then you are able to save these versions similar to how you have the 821, which is just two lines. And now I'm going to show you a few things. And don't listen to the garbage talking about, oh, your chart have too much lines on it. That's foolishness. Okay. But to each his own. That's the beauty of the financial market. Um, any system will work as long as you have the psychological frame of mind to obey the system and you have a proper risk management in the system. Okay, so now you see what I'm saying here. Nothing changed. We normally look for what we call order, moving average order. Okay, so if you look the 8 on top of the 25, 25 on top of the 50, 50 on top of the 89, 89 on top of the 140, and 140 on top of the 200. You can know a trend change by having a cross of the eight of the 200 and the 140. When the 200 and the 140 cross, you can say there's a higher probability that the trend have changed. Okay, I'm not gonna. Uh, I could put, I could put a, a cross over here. I'm Let me do it to show you what I mean. When come again when the 200 and the 140 moving average cross we can say that there's a higher probability now 
that the trend have changed. And when I talk about trend, I'm talking about trend in its respective time frame. Remember, one of the laws that we adapt is the laws of multiple time frame that say that each time frame have its own structure. So here what I want to do, I want to find an, uh, uh, an indicator that indicate um, a two EMA crossover. And let me see if I can pick up one of my custom indicator for that. You don't really need to have them on it, but I'm, I'm, I'm going to put, I want to just show you so I'll put 140, moving average, 200. I want to use the color purple and red so that you could see the, uh, and maybe I want to use a round arrow type. I'll just use round, so I'm going to change that to three. I'm going to go over to here, and here I'm, I'm going to use, I'm going to use um, purple, I'm going to use red here. Just a crossover, so we could see the arrows. I want to go to the maximum size, and you will see what happened here. You will look 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 at this cross. You see where it crossover, but you'll see you'll see the arrow here. What this is saying that is that the purple cross over the red, and this could give indicate a trend change. Now, while I'm designing a system, this is what I do. Every change that I have made and I feel that it is meaningful, what I will do is to resave the template. So I'll go here, go template, go that. I don't need to change the code now because it is the same version 2 that I am changing. So I just select it and it's going to ask me to override do you want to replace it? And I said yes, and that's it. It is safe. Okay, so now I'm saying to you, whatever time frame you're on, if you want to confirm a trend change within that time frame, you just look for this crossover. Now I'm on Boeing, and I'm on the, what I call the pivot time frame where we rest to look at change that the eight four. And this would have been equivalent to strategy six. If I move to strategy seven and the daily, I could still pick up that so-called change. I want you to listen and reason with me here. If you look, you'd have seen a cross over here and Boeing when the 140 cross above the 200. Now, so let us use this to analyze what have happened in the market today regarding Boeing. I'm on the daily chart. So this was the bar today. Earnings come out, it was pretty much of a volatile move. But let's reason. We have one, two, three, four, five. Stay with me. Five days before earnings report, you would have received information to go long point. This is the reason why, to be honest, I no longer listen to news. To be honest, I no longer look at PE ratio, earnings per share. Those, in my opinion, are good to talk about. Those are good points in discussion to answer why. It tells you why something happened. But for us who live from trading, the, glory, the, the various financial markets, we don't need to know why. We just need to know when. So this will tell you when to move. And not why you move. We care not about why it happened. We don't care why we have a change here. Let's go back to our left side. Let's go back here. And I want to also change this. I would have changed it to 825. Now instead of 821. Let's check and see if we have changed that. Okay, so 825 cross because we decided that a market, if you want to use the 821, it's, it's, it's just, as you have seen, not much difference. So it's okay. Okay? Now. If you look what happened, we were in a downtrend. Look at the 
higher moving average 200 140 89 so the bearish market surface you also get a confirmation to short Boeing here and we go nicely down here okay fine let's reason that here you get a reversal now while we see this reversal we're saying something could happen it could fail but we also know that if we have a reversal here what we'll do as is this would not give us a confirmation to buy for strategy seven but we could utilize strategy four or we could use like strategy three in order to execute the trade reason being and strategy three the risk is lower if there is any reversal we are going to cut that last shorter than if we take the trade on strategy seven so if you want to take this trade you can take it that's not a problem but you will take it and system number three that is strategy three and the 15 minutes or the 30 minutes and this become what we call a micro trend trade so when you see the 825 or the 821 crossover you should consider this to be a micro trend trade but our default risk is nine times the average true range of the trading time frame that's what we're going to trade by would not want to take a micro trend trade on the daily because the stop in terms of the default would have been nine times the average true range you would also note that the default risk for uh strategy seven is to risk 0 0.07 percent of free equity with a stop loss of nine times the average true range but if we go to the micro trend which say um strategy four then the stop would have been nine times the average true range on this time frame which is much less than strategy seven so we are risking less and also our risk would have been 0 0.04 for those of you who haven't gone through lecture one you note or recall that on the m1 chart we risk 0 0.01 percent of free equity here 0 0.02 percent of free equity here 0 0.03 percent of free equity here 0 0.04 percent of free equity here 0 0.05 percent of free equity here 0 0.06 percent of free equity here 0 0.07 percent of free equity here 0 0.08 percent of free equity and 0 0.09 percent of free equity the methodology the framework that we create within the global complete moving average trading system it means that our maximum risk for any trade is 0 0.09 percent that's the default now we have more aggressive risk model but we're just dealing with the default here now so in that sense if we look at this here's another crossover here's an 825 cross but we also have it within a bullish market structure and the 30 minutes we could also see that price pull down and hold support at support three bounce we could take this trade the risk nine times 2.6471 risking 0 0.04 percent of free equity so i'm going to go back to boeing i'm going to go and sit back at my pivot time frame what I'm saying here, looking at this before, we would we could have entered the trade long time before. Okay? Five days before we could go long. Well, if we go long five days before, you say that wow, we are still at a break-even point. But the question is today. And system number and strategy seven, is this a bullish market? based on what we are seeing here let's reason the first we can look at the momentum oscillator the rsi is 66 above 50 is bullish the stochastic 43 about to turn okay which means that this indicator pullback 
to an over soul status while in a bullish market structure this is an opportunity to get in this market now let's look on the bigger picture Boeing we're talking about so yes I am bullish and Boeing we could see here that we have the moving averages orderly so we're going to talk a little bit, we're going to talk a little thing here now. Seriously, I want to use a big, uh, a, a big vertical line to, to show you what is happening here, okay? So the moving averages, these are orderly. 8 on top of 25, 25 on top of 50, 50 on top of 89, and the 140 across the 200. This is a bullish market structure. Okay, let's reason here now. Now, if you want to get what I call a big picture approach for any financial asset, any financial asset. The best time frame to examine that asset on is the weekly. I'm going to go over to the weekly time frame. I want to talk about a lot of things here. Please stay with me here. Please stay with me. Now, on this weekly time frame though, I am not going to use any of these moving averages. So now I'm going to put in another feature on this system to improve on this system. I don't want to get into the whole theoretical or the reason and the advanced mathematical calculation. But I, I also incorporate cycle analysis in my trade and in developing any trading system I include cycle analysis. Based on my research for most of the financial asset that we have available to trade, I know that I can use, and this is the reason why I use 25. Okay, so let's talk about this 25 um, moving average. I use 25 because I believe it gives me a very close approximation to market cycle. But if you look at this 25 as is, what I want to do, I want to push it out of balance. I want to, um, I want to take half of it and call that my forward line. So going forward, I want to call I'm going to create another line, not a moving average, but whatever the market cycle you want to do. So, for example, I want to go 25, and we have an option. We can go exponential or we can go simple. Okay, so let me keep exponential for time. I'm going to go 25, but what I do, I take 50% of the period and shift it. 50% of 25 gives me 12.5. I run it after 13. So I want to shift this to 30. I want to use the same magenta, but I want to get a distinction. So I want to just use a dotted line for this, okay? A dash for this. Let me put it on. Now remember, I can change this to simple, or I can go exponential. I want to show you why. Um, many a time, we might say that we might want to use simple or exponential. We should not use small sample size to determine trades so most of the time I want to see about 500 to 600 trades before I can make a decision over a large sample size there is not much difference between exponential and simple okay so I just want to say that okay so here what I do I put it on and notice or you pay attention here. I'm gonna find let me do this too let me put both on let me put both exponential and simple so I lost in the same period half of it, but I just put this to simple. What I might do here then is just to put this as a little bit of finer that so we can see the difference. Let's look at this. Because I want to use just one indicator, one moving average, and the weekly, and ignore the others to do what I call my trend analysis to tell me whether or not I should buy, short, or stay aside. Only one 
moving average, I will focus on when I'm on the weekly to do the analysis. Now, I'm not going to go through the whole theoretical difference between exponential and simple. But what I'm doing is simple. We just simply take 25 bars. But with the exponential, we have a weighting effect. For this analysis, I am only interested in the 25 simple. And the 25 simple tend to give me a more smoother curve. So while the others are exponential, for this, I'm going to use the simple. So what I'm going to do here then, I'm going to take this out, because that's one, and just change this to simple, as I want. I prefer to have the bigger dash here. I use this color because it's to show you what I mirror. If I believe that 50 is the cycle, then I will take half of 50 is 25 and shift it, just to shift it out. So let me use that. So this is what this will be about. I could also do this. If I want to clear the clutter from my chart and to ensure that when I'm on the weekly for the analysis I just see one line I could do this so it's a learning point I could right click on this go to visualization take this out and what I will do is to put that I only want to see those on these time frame. Okay, oops, no, I take it off. So I want to see it on one minute, five minute, 15. And while I do it for this video, um, it's also to help you how you can set up different template or some person might have decided, okay, guess what? Let me put up a weekly analysis template and just have one on it, okay? Whatever you want, but I'll show you how we can do it. What I will do here, because I'm going to remember now, I'm I'm looking at the eight. Okay, so let's say I don't want the eight here. So I go so bam, I'm on the weekly. You realize the eight disappear. I could do the same for this. I want to go here. I want it 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 here. I don't want it here. So I leave that and click OK. This gone. I come here and do the same for the two hundred. Okay. I don't want all. I want that, want that, want that. I want it here, I want it here, I want it here. I want it here. I don't want it here, so I don't check it and go bam, it's gone. Okay? Let's go to the 140 now. I go to that. Take that out. One, done. That, okay? Take them off like this. I want I don't want it here. So I put that, bam, see it disappear now. Look at the 50. So I come here. This is how we engineer these things, okay? So we want to make sure that we understand what we're doing here. So it's not difficult, pretty much easy. And then I go, bam, see, vanish now. Go to the final one, the 89. So I go here, bam, bam, bam. Okay, take this off, take this off, take it off, okay? And I go, look what happened. I only have one. This is material to me. I want to, I want to save my template. Because I don't want to be doing this work over and over. I want to ensure that what I do, I save it so I can get access to it. So look what is happening then. As long as I go to the weekly, it's going to give me the analysis. statement. now. As long as price is above this line, is the 25 forward line. We are in a bullish market. Or it means, I wouldn't say bullish, it means that you should keep long. You must only buy. So when the candle is above it, it's a, it means that the market sentiment is bullish. Let's use sentiment. When the candle is above it, the market sentiment is bullish. Therefore, if you're short and you see candle close above this line, it might be a good thing to just get out first. In light of this, we can also use this forward line as a stop loss. So for example, Boeing, the price close at 212.48. The stop loss could be put right here, 168.47. If we go back in time to say, um, 
when we pass up a shot here. You realize as you go along, you could use the forward line as a stop loss line. So apart from using the fractal, we could use the forward line as a stop loss line. So for Boeing, based on our methodology, we are saying the market sentiment is bullish. I want to stay right here because there's another um, popular stock today I want to talk about which is Tesla. And for the record, this evening after market close, Tesla beat earnings. So I think you would have seen a different close for Tesla. One, one, one of the other questions that I receive is, what other platform can you construct this system on? So let's say a person who don't have MetaTrader 4. I don't have the ability to download a platform. What's the alternative? Well, I tell you what I want to do for you. So this video will be a little bit extended. I'm going to show you in this session an alternative platform that you can use to construct the global moving of complete moving average trading system um only that you might not be able to put in these forward lines but i can show you the alternative in another video but i will show you the basis that you can put on it and it still works i, I was looking for tesla let me see if i can find i want to look at two stock in this i want to look at twitter i want to look at tesla i want to look at microsoft have been pretty much common in the market too and i look at boeing so let me see which one i can pick up here to just show you something here okay so here is microsoft all i need to do for this is to pull it over and let's reason this is oops no this is not that's not microsoft let's carry it over okay so look here okay so this is microsoft Okay, so let's read my friend. I've, you'd have heard a lot of persons saying, oh, buy Microsoft. Microsoft is cheap. I would not buy Microsoft here. For me to buy Microsoft, Microsoft would have to close above the forward line. This is a bearish market for me. You could see the forward line is downward sloping. I have to see change in this. So I will not buy Microsoft. I will not follow them by Microsoft. Reason, the other reason that I could look at is that the MACD is negative. We could also see the RSI at 46 below 50, give indicating bearish momentum, the stochastic below that. So while a lot of person talking about Microsoft, 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 if I am an investor, if I'm a long-term position trader, I will not take Microsoft. Maybe I could do micro-trend trade if I want, yes? Because I could possibly note that I have support here and I'm seeing a bounce, okay? But if I'm a long-term investor, like what most of the uh, so-called talking heads sort of um, cater for, I would not buy Microsoft here. I'll wait. It needs to cross above the forward line. Mark, this is our methodology. Every strategy is different, okay? So I'm just talking about our methodology now but let, let me do something here so since i was showing you the whole aspect of the forward line i can go back to strategy seven and when you go to strategy seven you'll also see the forward line built into it but i could also use the forward line and strategy seven as a trailing stop if i want to look what i'm here and strategy seven which is the daily price is below the forward line so it confirms its bearishness as we said before, we could take the 825 cross on strategy 7 by executing this as a micro trend trade and execute it on M30, which is strategy 4. If you look, you would have seen that on this strategy, if I'm executing it, it falls below the forward line. So maybe I need to wait a little bit more if I want.
but not respective. It's okay because the forward line is mostly used on the weekly for us. So yes, you could go ahead and take it. So you don't have to worry about the forward line, but you can also use it as a guide, as a trailing. So for example, when this break above here, and this will normally turn, and you could use it as trailing, but you don't need to do that neither. Reason being, we will always trail by nine times the average true range of the trading time frame. So coming from the daily, I could take this 825 cross by executing it as a micro trend trade. See that? All right, let me see if I can pick up Tesla and then we can move on to look at the alternative. There are so many um, instruments we could discuss here, but I want to stick to the plan. Let me see where is my Tesla. Okay, so here's Tesla. And remember now, um, Let's go back to our pivot window. We want to stay right here. Right here is where we want to talk. It's where we want to rest. So remember here, we rest on H4. Okay, that's where we look to see where we are. If you look, on the 13th of January, about two weeks ago, we have an 825 cross. Coincidentally, it also break above the forward line on the H4. See that here? Which is a bullish. Meaning. Again, you could take this on the micro trend trade, but let's show you what is happening here. So, if, if, if you look at this, while this is a downtrend, I might want to look to get a long term perspective on this one. When I go to the weekly, the weekly tends to mirror the fundamentals, it mirrors the market sentiments. So, let's go over to the weekly and see what is happening here. Oh, wow, this is dangerous. Look at this one. Tesla crash. Look at it. So, here's the thing. Really and truly, I might want to see 256 on Tesla. It's a bearish market still. The RSI, 30, showing bearish momentum on this stock. But there's something else we could note. We're having a period of consolidation. See that? You see how these candles become like a tiny candles? So we could have a breakout. So while we know that, yes, it's bearish, we could look for a reversal, as we have seen an uptick in the mat day. Bearing that in mind, that the bigger picture is bearish, we could look to try to capture reversal. So go to the daily. And the daily, look carefully what is happening. We are still below the forward line. So maybe what we would want to do then is to see a break above this and an 825 cross. And if that happened, we could take it. We could take the trade. Maybe at this stage, I might want to hold back a bit. Okay. To see first. But I could tell you that if I read 162, I could take it. And I could aim for a retest to 400 in the long term. But let's say there's a desire to allocate some risk to Tesla. When I go down to my pivot screen, I see I could take a micro trend trade by going to M30. And yes, I would have taken that micro trend trade and M30 from here. You look what you see the same 140. Look at this now. You see, see what I'm here. Remember this arrow 140 200 cross. This indicate yeah, a trend reversal and M30. And we could take the trade. Here, here's the deal the risk though is nine times 1.7886. So technically less than $18. So I would be risking less than $18 per share on this. This is how we analyze these markets. We, we don't listen to the crowd and act upon crowd information. We listen to the crowd and we get to our chart. The tape tells it all. That's our guide. We will never execute a trade from impulse. We will never execute a trade without looking at our chart. 
Okay, so we'll have covered that analysis. In summary, for Tesla, if we are taking Tesla, we'll take it as a micro trend trade. Okay, we have looked at Microsoft and we have looked at Boeing. Let me let me use the opportunity to look at another very common financial asset, Bitcoin, to show you that yes, we can do all things with our system. So here is our H4 pivot. Although we know that there's a trend change on the H4, look for this. Look for the purple up arrow. Purple up our bam, this means bullish for us going forward. We could enter, stop, nine times the average two range. We use H4 as our pivot key entry, key trade analysis window. Because H4 really execute a medium term, short to medium term trade. So if we want to rest everything on one window, the 8.4 is great. And yes, if you look at this, when we have this crossover, we could use the forward line and the 8.4 as a trailing stop. And bam, bam, bam. So look what happened here. Look, look at this. Let's say we enter here on the high of this scandal. Okay, so let me put this and put a white, okay? So we would have enter somewhere here, okay? Boom. See what happened? We go sideways, pull back, 25, oh, look, come exactly on the 25, bounce, continue up nicely. Okay, where are we here today? Look at this, come down, 25 again. I show you the alternative trailing stop earlier on, too. I said we could use the tip of the factor that form outside the 21. The fact that we change to 25, I mean that the tip of the factor that form outside the 25. So outside the 25, outside the 25. So look, stop. So we could go like this. So we could trail. Okay, so look at that. When we enter, we could move the stop here. We will not move it here because this is outside the 8, outside the 25. Move the stop, outside 25. Move the stop, outside 25. But now you have another alternative. We could trail via the forward line. So the stop would have been 22,500. See that? Forward line. This is the powerful Bitcoin of many who'd be looking at that. Okay, so let, let me just um, clear about the screen. Oh, you clear the screen again. We go, just select version 1.02, and you're ready to move. There are so many uh, things we can do with this when we have... Let, let me look on Google. Let me look at Google here. Since, since we're on this thing, let's talk real time. So here's our pivot window. This is where we sit to make decisions. We are here now. Let's forget about the past and let's look where are we now. So we are right here. At this stage, we look and see what is happening. Okay? We would have seen that definitely we are far, far from a buy for this. And this we have a gap to. We could go to our window here though, and you'd have seen as well, wow, the massive um we, we are coming from way up here, okay? And we have seen the changes over time, okay? So this is pretty easy to analyze, okay? All right, so now that we have completed the, and remember here, we're coming from our original version one, okay? And we, we have identified the different, or we can drill down to take these, um, these trades. What I'm going to do now before we close the session is to fulfill the requirements for those who ask what other platform can we use? So what I'm going to do then, I'm going to go over to Yahoo. Yes, the good old Yahoo. Okay, so here is our Yahoo.com. Go to Yahoo.com. When you go to yahoo.com, click on finance. Save me, please. Save me. 
and here you see you'll be able to read which is good read some of the views of the analysts you can also see different data so for example let me look at Boeing the symbol for Boeing is BA so I want to just type BA in the quote lookup you're learning a lot of things today eh? and you'll have seen the Boeing company and you will see some others too so let me click on this one so I click on Boeing company and this gives you I will just add this to my uh, my watch so so I can follow Boeing what I've done a while ago is just a follow Boeing so anything like news analysis come out I can go and get it now let's talk about this very um, important yahoo.com yahoo finance I've contributed so much to many persons including myself who have done um, specialization studies in finance many many years ago the only tool that we have to use was Yahoo, Yahoo Finance and we really appreciate the contribution that Yahoo Finance have done to the landscape of investment. So this is what we would have done. We come here. This also give you the fundamentals like the PE ratio, the earnings per share, earning day. But I said for and we're not here for the fundamental data, but yes, you could go and look at it. You can also go and look at statistics for Boeing. And this gives you everything like market cap, enterprise value, the trailing PE forward, PE price to sales, all these things is there, okay? You can look at the financials too, like the um, the balance sheet, you know, the uh, uh, income statement, everything is there. But what we are interested in here is the chart. Because we want to do technical analysis. So here's what I want to do for you. We are going to build the global complete moving average trading system and the Yahoo. And um, so let me click on chart. When I click on chart, I've already customized the moving averages. I want you to look at this. Um, you would have seen the version 1.02 you'll see the 8 the 25 EMA the 50 the 89 140 200 we are able also to put in a trailing stop with the multiplier 9 so we can see exactly where the stop loss is supposed to be without doing the calculation I put in the MACD setting to see I have our stochastic RSI and I also have the ATR at the bottom this gives you the system that I have built on MetaTrader 4 the beauty with having it here on Yahoo is because you are now able to type in any stock symbol and analyze it from a technical analysis perspective how do you get these indicators on just click on indicator window and when you do that you'll see the various indicators so you'll have seen our moving average and you just follow it might be all of these and you can put them in and there are many others too, I must say. Many, Yahoo have improved a lot with um, giving us these uh, indicators that we can pretty quickly um, uh, just create any system on this powerful platform. Now, let me use this as a guide then to look at some another maybe stack that we have not looked at yet. Let me look at 3M okay so let me um uh, and i go on full screen uh, most of you if you go down you would have seen it on the lower screen here as well okay um so you, you might look and see that my screen seems big is the same thing here okay all right so let me do this let me um 
let me go to the window that you might see first. This is the window that you might see. To get it big full screen, just click here and full screen. So let, 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 me, let me use 3M. Let me use, let's put in 3M, yeah? 3M is 3M company. Let's look and analyze this. And you'd have seen here, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go full screen so you can see exactly what is happening. You'd have seen that we close at 1.8% down for the day, but after hour, we rally up 0.26. The big question is, what exactly is that mean here? In truth and in fact, I'm going to go to the interval. So I'm going to go first and I'm going to go to my 4 hour. Okay? This is where you normally rest. The truth is this based on what we are seeing here, this market sector is a bearish market sector. We could see clearly the pressure to the downside. Why would I buy 3M here? I would not buy it. Okay? Um, it can get cheaper. I believe that we could say um, about a 96 and trim. Let me go to the week to, to the daily for further analysis to look deeper. Look at trim, bearish. Why would I buy it? Why would I say it's low here? It's not low. It can get even lower. Why would I buy? It? Okay, if I'm in a position, why would I have entered in a position here to gamble? The stop loss is saying here. Why not wait? until price break above 135 okay let me go to the master weekly because here we can see exactly what is happening too look look at the weekly bearish the bearish market don't listen to them don't follow them don't buy 3m at this time you'll be gambling we want to see some stability first it can get even deeper this Okay, let me put in our Boeing that we had before. And you'd have also say Boeing here. I'm on the weekly and you'd have seen Boeing rallying up a bit here. Um, for sure, you can drill. This would have been above um, that 25 forward line. If I go to the daily to get a traditional market structure, you could see that this is a bullish market structure. See immediately now the moving averages are lining up. We could see price volume spike in here. Yes. And we can go back to our pivot platform. And now you could say that yes, this is a bullish market. You'd have seen the crossover happening here and the rallying. This is going to lead us to the end of our commentary for this session. I know it's pretty much of a long one. A lot of stuff we learn in it. Um, and I look forward to do many more for you. It's good to go over these lectures maybe four, five, six times. In this session, we look at the forward line. And the MT4 is very, very powerful. Practice it. In my next session, I will continue to analyze these markets for you.